How you doing? I'm doing all right, personally. I'm, uh, I think I'm still giggling from last night's show. Uh, I know I was still giggling about it when I woke up this morning. Yes, that is a hole in my shirt. And it's, uh, it's a message that I need to, uh, I need to cut the crew neck out of this thing because, man, I hate crew necks. And uh, I usually just slice them off the second that I get a t-shirt with a crew neck in it. Um, but I didn't do that with this one. And then I tried to stretch things a little bit and wound up with a hole right at the seam where the neck is sewn onto the shirt. So I need to just get rid of the damn thing altogether. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's have a listen, shall we, to the, um, to the theme song, the jingle, the intro for tonight. It's time to go live, it's time to go live, hey, it's time to go live, it's time to go live. It's time to go live. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's time to go live. 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 Hit it, cricket. Well, she really changed it up for it for us tonight, didn't she? Dang, girl. All right. Well, here I am. Thank you, as always, Summer Savage, for the uh the always snazzy intro music. I love it. I love it. And I, I feel very special that I get custom intro music. I think that's just amazing. So thank you. I'm, I'm honored, quite frankly. <sighs> yes, people are fascinating sometimes. That's why I named this video in such a way. Um, because when I was watching Reese and Tommy's call in live tonight on the Relate a Boat, and uh, and I cheated a little bit, as Reese says. I don't I don't know why she says that. I don't know why she says I'm cheating. But um, every time I call in, which is I mean I've only done it twice, and tonight was the second time. Um, she says that I'm cheating, but I'm not sure what that's about, but okay, whatever. Um, I had to talk to them about Cooter and they did not know. Neither one of them was, was aware. And Reese lives in Missouri. And it's funny because Tommy said something about Cooter misery. And well, that was something that I was thinking about last night when I was getting ready to crawl into bed. Um, because a, a very common nickname for Missouri is misery. And I'm like, oh my God, cooter misery. That's funny. Um, and Tommy just went there with no prompting at all, which I found it to be quite amusing. Um, but I think somebody was well behind and started late, um, and was trying to catch up. Maybe they were listening to my call more toward the end of the stream, but they told me to stop pandering. And I'm like, what? To whom? To whom am I pandering? What am I doing? What's your problem? I can't help it. Reese led in to a statement saying that she was asking about people's oral habits. And I'm like, I have to call. I have to call right now. I have to tell them about the Cooter Cafe. This is important. It's serious business. So I did. And uh, later on in the stream, got called out and told to stop pandering. Now, granted, this is a person who has never been on this show in my chat, at least not visibly. Um, if they lurk, hi. Hi, care to tell me what you were talking about? Um, but either way, 
I thought it was funny. Reese and Tommy thought it was funny. And uh, that's really all I care about. Ta-da! Anyway, uh, let's say hi to some folks. Nicole Yonker is here. Hello, Nicole Yonker. Good to see you. Miss Sunrise Dawn is here, and she's got him out straight away. Very nice. Our little sum sum. There's our Miss Summer Savage. And we have Marla Dillard and Janet G. And Ellen Valentine. Hey, everyone. Good day, good day. Good to see you. Welcome back. Pamela S.B. Butterfly. Hi. Susan P. is here. And Susie Oberholtz is here. Hey, lady. How you doing? Good to see you. Lori Driscoll. Hi. Good morning. Welcome. Who else is here? Let's see. Oh, Mother of Cats. Hello, Mother of Cats. Meow, 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 meow. Kimberly Gabble, Dawn. We love to see it. And Casillas, hi. Good morning, Ms. Maya. Good to see you. And Janet from another planet is here. Hi. Care for JC? Time to get more food tips? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Food tips. That's what we're calling it. Marla Dillard, you're going to get Denver all excited talking about getting rid of my uh, my crew neck. I know. He's going to he's gonna think that I'm trying to get rid of the shirt altogether, that hussy. Hi, Psych Sauce. Good to see you. Yeah, please hit the like or the dislike, whichever you choose. It's up to you. I kind of hope that you'll hit the like, but hey, you know what? This is, and I, I am a benevol benevolent queen, and uh, you can hit whatever button you like. Safe, sane, and consensual, you know? That's, that's what we're all about here. Pamela S.P. Butterfly is happy to be back in the corner booth, and that is how we roll up in this piece. Corner booth, baby, all the way. Lord Kiss Freak is here. Hello. We are keeping Miss Sunrise Dawn company while she's folding clothes. I did some of that earlier. I did some of that. I've uh, And I have one batch of laundry in the dryer, and I have another one in the wash. And I changed the sheets on my bed. I was busy. I was busy tonight. Was busy girl. Do, do, do. Oh, Ms. Ekblama is here. Got Morgan to you as well. Very nice. Ah, yes. Okay. So we're toasting to Ms. Summer Savage today. Oh, you heard me live on the boat, Lori Driscoll. Excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. And Maz is here. Yay, yay, Maz, hooray. You're here in time for the first Zeno Marlene of the night. For those of you who are new here, um, we play a game. It's not necessarily a drinking game because you don't have to drink in order to partake. You don't have to uh, smoke weed or cigarettes or anything. Um, you can use whatever beverage you have handy whatever it might be, iced tea, water, that's fine. If your indulgence is potato chips, have a potato chip, have a cookie, have a scone, have a bicky. whatever you choose, whatever your indulgence is. Um, I'm not trying to mess with anybody's sobriety or diet or anything else. So doesn't matter what it is. It could be flavored water. God knows I drink a lot of Zenu or a lot of flavored water up in this piece. Um, but anytime you hear either the word Zenu or the word Marlene, Zenu is the big bad in Scientology. Marlene Sweeney was the cult leader of the, uh, she was the leader of the cult that Ms. Marilyn Honig was in. Her name is Marlene Sweeney. And we say her name every chance we can because she's a bad woman and she did bad things. She's probably still doing bad things and everybody needs to know who she is. So whenever we say 
either of those words, it's time to partake. And the first one of the night apparently is being dedicated to Summer Savage, and I can get behind that. And now we sing. Zinu Marlina Everybody partake Cheers, y'all. It's Sunday night. We will not have Mark Hardman with us tonight. And I know this much because he is going back to work full time tomorrow. And we're super proud of him because he's been on on short term disability since mid January and he has been doing so much hard work on himself. So. He's going back to work in the morning, which means he had to go to bed early tonight because it's a school night. Um, But he said he's going to be catching us on the replay and uh, we'll we'll get to have him in here live on Friday and Saturday nights. So it'll work out. It'll work out. Yep. Janet G. That that's this person apparently does behave that way uh, and has been doing so for quite some time. So. Yes, Miss Sunrise Dawn says that person was acting trolly throughout the chat. Yep. I'm not here to name names. It doesn't matter. Yes, yes, Miss Sunrise Dawn, you certainly may. You can name names. I will choose not to. Missed that stream was sleeping for a bit. Pandering, really? Yeah, I don't I don't get it either. But you know, I mean, people gonna say what people gonna say. Oh, that's all right. Care for JC, but it's good to see you. Hi, I'm glad you're here. And Ms. Joanne Rice is here. Hello to you. Ms. Dawn Gloves. I just, all I can, all I can say to you, Dawn Gloves is this means something. And you know exactly what I'm talking about because I know where you at. That's okay, Crick. I was I was being accused of being a scary and intimidating bully tonight. Wow. Maz, that's amazing. What blind deaf moron could possibly I I mean I what? Shit, girl, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. Kim White is here. Hello. And hello to you, Smoke. Hi. Welcome back. We're good to see ya. We are happy to see you. It is good to see you. Lord, I just can't even. Who did that? Miss Sunrise Dawn will tell you, Rosalind. It's okay. Yeah, real, YouTube is a cruel place sometimes. Not in here. That's that's not the kind of community that I feel like fostering here. Yeah. I feel like I've been in the car for there forever. Are we there yet? Well, only you know for sure. Are you there yet? I hope you are. Damn, girl. You said it was going to be six hours. And that was like eight hours ago. I hope you got there. I hope you're there in one piece. The biggest corner booth ever made. That's right. It is infinitely expandable. Hey, guys, I slept half the day and hope I can sleep tonight, but we'll see. Well, you know what, Tamber June? I hope that you're getting all of the deeply restorative rest that you need and deserve. All right. Hef says, okay, I'm here catching up at 2X. By the way, all my t-shirt have a slit cut in the neck straight down the middle. Yep. I just, I tend to go all the way 
round the the neck to get this this annoying little neck band off because annoying. Oh, it was Discord people, so yeah, that doesn't that doesn't really count. Mariana. Hey son. I I don't know what that means. I hope I pronounced it correctly. I do not speak that language very well. Anne Hummingbird is here. Hello. Good to see you, Anne Hummingbird. And hello, Ms. Jen. We're happy to have you here too. Welcome back. Are you still in Vegas? Or are you are you back home yet to the sticks? Am I saying I want the tits out? I mean, who doesn't, right? She's having Coca-Cola, our summer savage. Hi, Gretchen only. I think I will be up a while even with your night meds. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Gross, that doesn't sound nice. Icky. I'm sorry. Lord Kiss Freak, I missed the boat tonight. Been rearranging my living room and still not done yet. Okay, well, um, it was another call-in show. It was a related boat. And um, our beloved Reesey Pants was, they they got to talking about, like, kissing. And Reese says that she's not really into it because she's way too obsessed with people's dental hygiene. And so she says that the first thing that she asks people is, uh, so, um, what are your oral habits like? And a lot of us picked up on that and like, okay, well, that's probably a question that I would ask, but I'm fairly certain that I mean something completely different by it than you do. So, yeah, it was interesting, but then I, then I, uh, then I called in and started talking about oral habit, habits and the, the fact that there is a cafe in Cooter called the Cooter Cafe. So, you know, speaking of oral habits, Michelle Haug, hello again. Welcome back. Yes, Marlene Sweeney is sometimes known as Moron Weenie. Yes, she is. Cheers. Kristen with a C is here. Hi. Good to see you. Welcome back. G'day, g'day. Ms. Koala Crafts, we're happy to have you. You're with me on the flavored water. It's how you reach your liquid intake goal every day. Yeah, I'm doing about two liters a day of water. It just has to have some kind of flavor to it or I'm absolutely useless. Do, 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 ba, ba, ra, da. Marlene's weenie. Mark is a legend, Alan Ballantyne. You damn right. You damn right, Mark Hardman is a legend. He is incredible. Absolute incredible human being. And we just love him to death. We love him. Mizek Blama, who will now ask the daily cruise questions when Mark is not here? Well, I mean... You could. Anybody's welcome to ask me daily cruise questions. Anybody at all. I welcome them. What stream was this? Well, let's see. Maz had uh, some assholes, apparently, in her chat. And the chat where I was talking was in uh, the recent Tommy chat. The relate about uh they did another call-in show tonight rosalind and it was very silly diana s hiya 
Good evening. Thank you for being here again tonight. I hope your chicken soup turned out great the other night. Last night's chicken soup was amazing. It was absolutely delicious. I have a hard time with people being snarky in chats. I tend to have to stop watching when it gets nasty. That's fair. That's totally fair. Just got to the inn, like just parked. Okay. All right. Wow. Well, go and be flat. Go and, and relax a little bit. Enjoy sitting on a surface that isn't in motion. And vibrating under your butt. <clears throat> That's adorable, as Aaron would say. Uh, where does the nickname Maz come from? Actually, Janet G, that's totally my fault. Totally my fault. It's what we do. I I make up nicknames of people. Us crafting ladies are so scary. Boo! Yes, we are. We're terrible. We're terrifying. We are like a gang of retired peoples acting like 14-year-olds in the corner booth, being a bit too loud while we discuss the menu. Yes. Yes. Indeed, that is really accurate. Marilyn is deadly with a crochet hook. That is true. Joel McCoyne. Hi. Welcome back, honey. I'm glad to see you. Well, hello, you dirty stay up, you. People who give constructive criticism is one thing. People who, grow sh who throw shade are unhappy in their lives. You know what, Gretchen? That seems about fair. And I don't know what this person had, why they considered what I was saying pandering, but... I don't know. It was relevant to the conversation that they were having. And it was hilarious at the same time and gave them more material from which to riff. And, you know, so I guess if that's pandering, then call me a panda. Wait. Is that? No. Hi, Matrix. Good to see ya. Discord trolls. Ooh, delightful. Yes. Aren't they lovely? We don't get too many of them here. Daniel Sander is here. Well, hi. Good to see you. Jen, you're still in Vegas going home tomorrow. Very nice. Well, if you have an opportunity and you're of a mind, I believe that there is Fat Burger in Las Vegas. Get you some of that. Smoke remembers beta testing Discord a long time ago. Wow. That's pretty cool. Oh, I haven't seen that name since the days before Aftermath blow up. Did I miss something, Nicole? What name? Ooh. Duncan and I are doing a stream tomorrow about the solar eclipse. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. Heifer's oral habits are very, very dirty. Of course they are. I have to get my shit together and scrape up enough money to ship the painting to Reese. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad it's finished. I'm really glad you didn't scrap it completely. I'm so happy. Oh, my God. She's going to lose it. She's going to completely lose her mind, Maya. She absolutely will. It's incredible. I tell everyone I got implants and that, too, is mistaken. Two tooths replaced. Okay. Swear to Xenu. Yes, Bridget Alexander, Cooter Cafe. Damn right. Damn right. 
Oh, Daniel Sanders wondering what they got on the menu at Cooter Cafe. Yeah, I think I think we all want to know what's on the menu. Although, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. How much sex happens on the balconies on a ship? Asking for a friend. Probably quite a lot. Quite a lot, Hef. And Casilla says, on the from the two cruises I've been on, I would say one in 20. Okay. And if that friend were to get caught, is there a sex on the balcony penalty that you have to pay? Huh. No. Just, I mean, if you happen to be seen by one of the many security cameras along the side of the ship, just know that security is getting a thrill too, you know? Ah, it's a somewhat juvenile way to say hi. Thank you, Mariana. And did I, did I say it okay? Did I say it correctly? And away from the vomiting doggo in the car row. Wow, that stinks. Literally, probably. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for barfing dog. It wasn't pandering. People are random. Okay, thank you, Rosalind. Oh, no. We are babysitting a two-week-old little cat. Sweet boy. Family had to go to a family thing, so we're doing it till tomorrow. Oh. Mm. Do you have to feed him every four hours? And poor little Babson? Will you send me a photo of the baby, please? I want to see the photo of the baby. I have, I, I really need some kitten therapy. I think you guys, I'm kind of a mess right now. Joel McCoy, if you would be so kind to take a photo of that wee smidgen, send an email to chowyunsmut at gmail.com with that photo attached. I would be forever grateful. Because, oh my God, I really need kitten therapy, you guys. It's, it's, oof. No, Matrix, he's not here. Uh, I mean, I think you need, you mean, not Juan, his name is Paulo Enrique, Henrique, something, something. There were a couple of other names, but I don't believe that he's in here tonight. Haven't seen him yet. Anyway. Darcy H. is in here. Hello. I'm off to a really slow start for packing for my 9 a.m. flight. Oh, no. Ew. Ew. Oh, gross. I'm sorry. 9 a.m. flight. Bleh. That means you have to be in the airport at 7 a.m. Unless it's an international flight, in which case you have to be at the airport at 6 a.m. Gross. Ew. All right, Dawn Gloves is waiting in the car for her brother to get a, get them checked in. Fantastic. Psych Sourced says, this is a group of friends I always needed. Dirty ass MFs, love you guys. That's us. We love it. Gretchen only. I was in Vegas last week and can vouch that there indeed there is fat burger. Mm, I love fat burger so much. It's been so long since I've had fat burger. Hi, Night Owls. Well, hi, Becky USA. Good to see ya. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I can't tag on a phone either, Rosalind. Don't feel bad. I can never do that. I can never figure out how to. I don't even know if you can. I was going to do a stream for the eclipse, says Matrix, but it's going to cloud covered here. Yeah, same here. Same here. We're going to have all the clouds. It was raining tonight when I went out to feed the deer. 
And Maz is getting out them cock rockets just because. Just because. The sign is awesome. Thank you, Pamela. I love it. I love that I can change it every night and just write what I want to on it. And I love that it's clear so I can hold it up so that you guys can read it and I can read it at the same time. And it's going to be right way round for both of us. I'm so happy. I'm so happy about it. Dang it, now I'm hungry, says Rosalind. This always happens at my parents. Dad's surgery is tomorrow, so I'm hanging out to help. Okay. Right on. You're going to be fine. I promise. Go find a snack. Go find a snack. You're at your parents' place. I go find snacks at my parents' place. Now, what just happened? First memory that came up in my library. Oh my God, this is a bottle feeding kitten. Dawn Gloves, am I supposed to show this? Because I see that bottle feeding kitten. Cooter breakfast buffet sounds delicious. <laughs> Talk about a grand slam. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yes, make sure they get a good angle, Hef. That's the important part. I'm working on a new movie called Hooters, Cooters, and Tooters. Okay. Make it be about college people. Nobody younger. Donnie scattered. Showing up late and hearing a question about what's there to munch on in Cooter. Yep. Yep. All you can eat. All you can eat, Donnie. Lori Driscoll. Somebody else is a mess besides me. Ooh, girl. We all a mess up in here. That's how we roll. Misbehaving. Hey, y'all. Dirty wake up here. She just got up. Hey, girl. Good to see you. Oh, some some has endless videos of Alicia's pups. Yeah, I don't I don't need Alicia's pups. It's more it's for me. It's more a kitten thing right now. I really need me some some kittens. Sorry, Donnie scattered, but. I have to do this, and I know that Hef is going to understand when I go, Alan! 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 Oh, wait. That's not Alan. Steve! Steve! <sighs> yes, Hef, and Jesus loves him. And Jesus does, too. Garor, hi! Oh, my God, were your ears ringing? Because, seriously, my mama and I were just talking about you yesterday. How you doing, baby? Glad you're here. Susie Oberholt, I was a mess earlier. Joel made me cry. Oh, I hope he did so in the sweetest possible way. Sunshines, implants and pussy. What have I walked into? I mean, here we are. The welcome to the dirty stamps. You've walked into the corner booth. That's what happened. <laughs> okay, Mariana, I see that emphatic yes, and I think that means that I said it right. Yes. Fat burger, add that to the list. Adding it to the list, Alan Ballantyne. Added to the list, sir. Early travel times suck. Yeah, they do. 
Had to get up at 5 a.m. to get myself and the boys ready to leave at 6 a.m. to drive an hour to the train station for a 7.30 a.m. train. It was a very long day. Ew. Yeah, I bet it was. That sounds gross. Ooh, fat burger, says Donnie. Wait, are we still chatting about Cooter? I don't believe that there is fat burger available in Cooter. But I haven't done a deep dive into Cooter. <laughs> I've only, uh, I've only, it's been a, a pretty shallow investigation so far. <laughs> oh my God. Tommy and Johnny are right on the middle of the path and they are going to live stream it. So around 10 a.m. PST. Oh, right. They're right in the totality. Good. Lori, Lori, Lori. Hi. Good to see you. Everybody is sending all sorts of loves to Rosalind. And she is sending face red heart shape, face red heart shape, face red heart shape right back at you. Mariana just DM'd me a picture of breakfast. Ooh. And Pamela was finally able to tell hubby about our cooter discussion last night, and he was highly amused. I am glad that he was. Wait, you DM'd it to me. What is that? Wait, what? Who? Is it in my email? How'd you send it, Mariana? Let me know. Hope so anyway. Yeah, I don't see it right now, but. It being a mess was an IQ test. I would be a cert. Oh, if being a mess was an IQ test, I would be a certified genius. Somehow that feels like a, it feels like it should be a song lyric. But yeah, same. Same. Do do do. Have snorted. Nice. Very nice. I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of laughing in here, and I'm assuming it's from the Alan. Alan. Oh, that's not Alan. Steve. Daytime. Nighttime. Daytime. Nighttime. Do, do, do. It's a cooter filled stream. Oh, yes, it is. I'm so stoned. When I read Tutor back there for your movie, I thought you were talking about cooters and hooters set in the British monarch time of the Tudors. I see it may have been a spelling error. You know what, though? Both work. Both work. See, Gerroar, you missed it last night. Last night, we discovered that there is a town in Missouri, unless you were lurking, and in, in which case, if you were lurking, I'm not going to do a full recap because I don't want to bore the piss out of everybody else who was already here last night. Um, but uh, just in case, we found out that there is a town in Missouri called Cooter. And... Uh, Well, it, it things just devolved from there, quite frankly. Uh, Fatburger will have to be sought in Arizona, perhaps, Alan. Yes, Anne Hummingberg has it there in California, in, in Lancaster, California. The train trip was back in March, and my boys have asked when we're doing another train trip, so I guess it wasn't too horrible. Boy, I guess I guess that's true, Pamela. 
You've only scratched the surface of Cooter. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. Just, um, well, I can't say that I've dipped my toes in. But yes, yes, just just had a a shallow little poke around, shall we say. If there's a hot dog place in Cooter, Rosalind says. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. No, a sausage factory. Heaven help us. Heaven help us all. Oh, good. Seventh is here. Hi. Going to try to go back to sleep, says Matrix. Pain has decreased some. I hope that you sleep sweet. And you rest well, you poor thing. May your pain fuck off into the forever. Oh my God, yes. Don't get me started on the employees at Uranus Fudge Factory. They are amazing. Well, hello, Form 13, who has nothing to say but Hot Carl. I went as Hot Carl one year for... Uh, Halloween, meaning that, well, I have breasts and I was dressed as Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, um, only more attractive because I wasn't bald and not excessively hairy. Um, I don't know. It was pretty funny. You are very welcome for the warm welcome. We're happy to have you here. Seventh. Yes, Marla Dillard did find find yum yum burger and fries of Cooter, Missouri. So yum yum. That Cooter burger. Dawn, you found the video and sent it to me. Thank you. Alan's never had a churro? Fuck. All right. Cheese curds I think I knew about because he'd never had poutine. And poutine is on the list. Is it just me or is the chat moving faster than normal? I'm not sure, Kim White. I'm not sure. But, I mean, there's like 59 people. You, were, you weren't lurking, but you can top that as we have a town in Canada called Dildo in Newfoundland. Yes. Yes. And uh, Jimmy Kimmel is the honorary mayor of Dildo. Yeah. Yeah, we were, uh, we, we got there. We talked about Captain Dildo and the annual Dildo Days Festival. Grr, roar. Yeah. That one sent us. It got us going for sure. But uh, then we found out about Cooter. And, uh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, it, things just devolved a little bit. I don't think that scratching and cooters really go hand in hand unless you have an STI, in which case that makes sense. Well, I mean, sometimes you just get a random itch and you got to scratch it. Doesn't mean that you got to like really dig in. I did not say anything about a scratch and sniff Cooter, but uh, boy, I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? I, I would, hmm, 
We never got those stickers in grade school, did we? Never been to a sausage factory, but I can tell you all about a sausage party. Ooh, child, me too. We were all jumping in on the cooter. It was almost like a train full of naked mole rats pounding cooter where it hurt the most. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. A douche factory. Yes. Summer's Eve makes me feel fine. Not over fucking autocock rocket. Oh, yeah. There is also a Climax in Alberta. There's a couple of different towns called Climax. And Casillas got yum yum in Cooter. Yep. You've had Krispy Kreme? Okay, good. Thank you, Sunshines. Or thank you, Alan Valentine. I will not put it on the list. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. We drove by the Uranus Fudge Factory today or maybe yesterday. It's amazing. It is amazing. I've been there three times and I am happy every single time I go. I love it. I believe Alan is going to eat for eight days continuously. In Denmark, there's a town called Middelfart. Obviously, it means something very different here. Yes. Yes, I imagine it does. Now I shall have it. Okay, thank you, Mariana. I made a hamburger with a glazed donut as the bun. Oh my God, that was fabulous. Closest one to me, though, is about an hour, but I'd have it again. Okay. Anywho, folks, so nice to see everybody up at night. I've had a really exhausting last couple of days, so I'm going to check out. Oh, no! Your 17-year-old cat passed away. Was that Oscar? Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Girl, roar. Baby love. I'm sorry. Devolved a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Y'all had me peeing my pants. I'm... For merch, I wonder if you can add scratch and sniff stickers of food cravings. The possibilities here are truly, truly endless. I wonder if there are any farms or plants near Cooter that make Cooter malodorous sometimes. That's very possible. That's very possible. It is six miles away from the mighty Mississippi. So I imagine it does get uh, sometimes rather humid and moist in Cooter. Um, but it's such a small community that I imagine it's relatively tight community as well. And, um, I don't know if they would have anything right inside the town, but I imagine that the there's got to be a waste treatment plant somewhere relatively nearby. Hello, Charmichael. We're back on our bullshit. Yes, and Mariana... 
lives near pleasure regret and anger regret. I mean, all right. Thank you, LKF. I see you. And yes, it was Oscar. Honey, I'm so, so sorry. That blows. That really blows. He has, he has crossed the rainbow bridge. And he was a very, very good boy. And he had himself a wonderful person who took him for walks and carried him wherever he needed to be and took very good care of him. So you changed his entire life for him. And I'm glad that he had you as a, as a person companion. I really am. So indeed, let us see new Marlene to Oscar. And to you, Gurror. I know his memory will continue to be a blessing, but uh, I hope that you're able to get some rest and that you're able to sleep well. Cheers, darling. And before you go to sleep, you haven't been here in a while. I don't know if you're aware of this. We do this every night now. Grr roar. We sing a song. Night meds. Take your night meds. It's a modern pharmacology. Night meds. Time for night meds. They can help your physiology. Take them well before you go to sleep. They work while you're busy counting sheep. When you take your night meds, it's a happy, healthy snooze time. A snorry snooze time. You'll have a sleepy time. Night meds. Remember to sip first so that the melatonin or the levothyroxine or whatever turns you on uh, don't stick. Wow, seventh son. I had a roommate in college that was from Spread Eagle, Wisconsin. He married a girl from Cumming, Georgia. That's amazing. I feel like she should have been from Spread Eagle. But I guess any of them could have been from Cumming. I mean... In a sense, we're all from coming, aren't we? When you get right down to it. Alan Ballantyne just ordered some melatonin after the live stream last night. Good job. I have the dissolving ones now. Which uh, is currently in my mouth. It says that it's fast dissolve. I disagree. It's also not delicious. Pretty gross, honestly. Oh, I'm sorry Corey's sick today, Anne Hummingbird. That stinks. What's going on with Corey? And yes, let us Zenu Marlene to Gur Roar and to Oscar. Since Kimberly's on her game with the emojis, I'm happy to toast to Oscar yet again and to Gur Roar. Nothing but love coming at you, babe.
Food craving, says Mariana. When I was expecting one child wanted ketchup with everything and the other wanted candy with chocolate and caramel. That's fair. Alan, you got the dissolvable ones. Cherry, you think? These call themselves citrus. I disagree. Blah. Blah. Hopefully yours are better than mine. Hi, chat, says Heather McLaughlin. Hello. Please know that I send y'all dirty stay up greetings. Peace and love to all who need it tonight, day, whatever. Thank you so much, Heather McLaughlin. Eating another orange, sticky fingers. I'll be out of chat. Is that why your fingers are sticky? Okay. Sure. I used to live near Concerning Dischargeville. At least you were near it and not living in the middle of it. The green drink looks tasty, better than my diet Pepsi. Flavored water. Honestly, it's, it's, uh, so there are different flavored water, little packet sticky things that you can just, you know, little sticks of powder that you can dump in and They offer many, many flavors. I got a box of Skittles flavored water, flavory powder things. And um, this is the green apple flavor. They have all the standard Skitter, standard red bag Skittles flavors. They've got like orange, grape, strawberry, green apple. I missing one? I feel like I'm missing one. I don't know, but either way. They make the water taste good so I can continue drinking the water the way I should be. But yeah, not bad. Ooh, bronchitis you're thinking. You know it's bad when she doesn't want ice cream. Damn, yeah. I'm trying straight CBD gummies for the, f I'm assuming you meant first time and got, uh, got hit by auto cock rocket there. I'm not sure what to think. Are you a fan or any thoughts? Thank you. Um, I have found that CBD gummies didn't really do anything for me. I have THC gummies and sometimes those really help me. I find that they're even more helpful if you eat something with some fat in it right around the same time you have the gummy um, because I know that THC is fat soluble. I don't know about CBD, but I would assume, and I could be incredibly wrong here because I know what happens when you assume, um, but I would assume that then since they are derived from the same plant that they, the CBD is very likely also fat soluble, but I'm not positive on that. I am not a chemist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a bud tender. Um, so I'm just guessing at this point, but I have found that CBD doesn't help with my pain, but um, it has, when I've used a tincture in the past, it has helped with my anxiety somewhat. 
and the THC gummies do help me go to sleep. But again, in order to get them to really kick in, you got to have something uh, with a little bit of fat to go along with it, like a piece of buttered toast or um, I had a small slice of uh, no sugar added fudge from Uranus Fudge Factory, as a matter of fact, um, really no joke, um, worked like a charm. So, yeah. Char Michael is having peppermint tea. Citrus yucky. It's all in the brand. Sunshine's yours is gone within 15 seconds. Mildly envious of that. These take a while. Diet cranberry juice tonight and cocoa not together. Oh, thank you, Zenu. Lord, I do not want to think about what that would be like together. Ew. Skittles flavored water sounds horrendous to you. Well, Daniel Sander, you know what that means? More for me. I drink no calorie stuff like Diet Pepsi and then stuff pizza into my face. Maybe pretty green next time. Well, you know, I mean, part of the reason that I drink the no calorie stuff, um, but I'm perfectly fine eating really fatty things is because I'm doing keto. So I need the lower carbs, which is why I will continue drinking zero sugar sodas and things like that. Um yeah, because I do the keto thing. So that's low carb, medium protein, and high fat. I love fat. Mmm, butter. CBDS stuff needs a fat too? Okay, good. Good to know, Ann Casillas. <sighs> I get store brand, real lemon brand, and crystal light powders and some crystal light liquid flavors. I like alternating the flavors of the powders and mixing the liquid flavors. Yep. Yep. I mean, my favorite crystal light so far has been the cherry pomegranate, but I do like the wild strawberry and that one has caffeine in it as well. Um, but like there's, there's little starburst flavored powders. There are Skittles ones. There's, there's so many different kinds of, of drink powders that you can add to flavor your water guys, ladies. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And Lori Driscoll coming in with the realness. She has been to Big Bone Lick in Kentucky. That's serious business, folks. She ain't playing around. Yeah, I've been to Uranus three times. But she's been to Big Bone Lick. I I I gotta recognize, you know, respect. I'll put some respect on that. THC gummies amaze balls, but too easy to get way too high at work. I suppose that's why I leave them alone, unless it's like right time for me to go to bed. Bud tender is your dream job, some, some. Okay. That's fair. I don't have enough information about it to be able to make that my dream job, but it certainly is interesting. I do circle sometimes and strawberry watermelon drops for water flavor. Oh, that sounds kind of good. CBD works best with a little THC is the best blend and it needs fat. Okay, good. Good, good, good. CBD helps with my pain, but only when applied topically. Okay. I think my stepdad was using a CD, CBD thing for his pain. Um, like knees or something. I don't remember. But that sounds about right. I got to have the THC gummies. CBD or Deltas don't work for you. Okay. That's, that's fair enough, Sav. 
Summer. Savage. Why I just called you Sav? I have no idea. Seventh. Orange, lemon, lime, grape, and strawberry are the original flavors. In the 20 teens, they added green apple. Okay, so this box has orange, grape, strawberry, and green apple. They didn't bother with lime or lemon. Interesting. Hey, I hope no one was affected by the earthquake on the East Coast. Not from, I mean, nobody said anything out here. I remember the last time there was a, an earthquake on the East Coast because I was living in Jersey at the time. Um, I had been awake for about 36 hours and was walking to the store to get cigarettes. And I stepped off the curb to cross the street. And everything moved. And I was like, what just happened? Have I gained a lot more weight than I thought I have? Am I tripping balls? But then I noticed that everybody came out of their houses. And we're looking at everybody else. They're like, wait, did you feel that? Did you feel that? Did you feel that? And I'm like, wait, I really have gained a lot more weight if that's what happens when I step off the fucking curb. Um, but then I pulled out my phone and pulled up Twitter. And sure enough, East Coast earthquake was a thing. Holy shit. Yeah, I went down to uh, visit a friend of mine in D.C., not long after that, and got to see some of the damage up close. It was no joke. But up in Jersey, it was mostly like, you know, somebody's plastic chair in their yard tipped over. So there was a photo of that with, you know, the date. I'd never forget, you know, the carnage. The current, the horror, but um, there was some damage in D.C., which is, I guess, where where the epicenter of it was, or was near the epicenter. Um, yeah, it was it was no joke, but nobody said anything in here about it, so I do it new. Can't have THC in my system because of work. What do you do, LKF? If you don't mind me asking. Good morning, Brian Lucas, and good morning to Phil as well. Saw someone with a cock rocket misspell, and I love it for a new name, Christy Cream. That's either your new porn name, or it's going to be somebody's drag name in about two seconds. That's amazing, and I love it. We also have a drag performer who comes up here sometimes, and her name is Portia Potty. We love her. Well, I mean, if we're going to be like that about it, okay. Zena Marlene, then. Damn. I'm six minutes behind in the chat again. Times like these, you need to change your nickname, Lori? I mean, not necessarily. You can if you want, but. Donnie scattered. Okay, all. Apparently, my internet has recently decided it turns back into a pumpkin at midnight. Ew. Sweet dreams, everyone, until tomorrow. Rest well, Donnie scattered. And I'm sorry that your internet is being a shithead. And Cassie, yes. Gotta sleep, dear lovelies. Be well and know that you are loved. Good night, cruise goddess. Good night, and Cassie, yes. Buena noche. We'll see you tomorrow. Sleep sweet. Rest well. Vaya con queso, my darling. Yeah, I know that means go with cheese. I know. I did that on purpose. What? Jilbo. Hi. Good evening.
I enjoy an indica for sleep and a sativa for daily activities, says the wildly apropos chat handle smoke. Um, yeah, that makes sense because indica is in the couch. Yep, makes sense. Have you seen the volcano in Italy blowing smoke rings? I have not. That kind of sounds like a euphemism. I'm not going to lie. Um, but no, Marla Dillard, I have not. I got a vape now and I didn't know the strain, but after I smoked it, I knew sativa kept me up for hours. Yet more comments that will not fly out of my mouth. I just finished day 329 of meeting my liquid intake goals. Girl, look at you smashing it. Good for you. Holy shit snacks. That's incredible. DC will also close the metro for days after a heavy snowfall. This is true, Form 13. This is true. Oh, you drive the giant trucks in a mine. Yep. Yep. They gonna test you for that. Welcome back, Alan Ballantyne. We're glad you made it back. When an earthquake happened, I was on the USS Laboon. We were doing an ammo onload offload at Yorktown, Virginia, and I was walking off the ship when the quake hit. It was wicked. Yeah, that's gnarly because you were way closer to the epicenter than I was up in Jersey. Okay, and just be careful, honey. Indica dominant hybrids are awesome. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a fan. Summer says she has to sleep too. Stayed up too late last last night laughing my ass off in here. Girl, same. We all did. Sunshines likes cheese. Sunshines is not alone. The poor doggo hurled on our bags. Thank goodness only on the outside. Oh, bless that poor pepper. It is getting harder and harder to find a combination of chemicals that motivate me to do anything other than shitpost. I've outlived my plans. Well, you know, there is something to be said about really quality shitposting. I feel like it's kind of a lost art. Honestly. I really do. So I'm glad. I'm glad that you are, I'm, I mean, I'm so, I'm, I'm sorry that it feels like you can't get motivated to do anything else, but I'm glad that we have you. You are a valuable resource to us and your shit posting, and we appreciate you. Thank you for your service. The Wi-Fi password at the Best Western Devil's Tower Inn is Close Encounters. Oh my God, that's amazing. You've made me so happy right now. Dawn Gloves, you have no idea. That's so freaking cool. I mean, you do see the Close Encounters poster on the wall over my shoulder, right? that's been here every night that I've been posting. My whole family is obsessed with that movie. We make jokes about that movie all the time. I mean, I told my mother where you were going and where you were going to be for the eclipse. And she's like, really? Yeah. So that's amazing. And I am super happy about it right now. Oh my goodness, I googled the Italian volcano Mount Etna. Cool pics of smoke rings. Ooh, I'm a little concerned though. Hey, retired Red. Good to see you. 
Hef is addicted to Twilight shit posting. Okay. Here, here to the quality shit posting. Yes. Yep. The mashed potatoes mountain. Yes. This means something. Marla Dillard, you've flown over the top of the tower? That's amazing. I don't think I ever have. It stinks. I guess that's just another place on the list where I need to go. Oh, here's a good question. I've been to Mount Etna. It is beautiful. Is have Team Jacob or Team Edward? Inquiring minds. Okay, so this is Mariana's breakfast. And I don't know why it looks like we can see the eclipse uh, on, is it going to be on Tommy's channel or on Johnny's channel? They're going to be live streaming it because they're in the path of totality. Um, NASA TV will have something. I'm sure. I'm certain of it. Mariana, I don't know what this breakfast is. But I'm telling you that to me, it looks like a very large round matzah with pink butter or perhaps salmon spread over top of it. And I don't know what that is, but that apparently is breakfast. Oh, you're going to send me a photo of the alien jerky shop. Thank you, Jen. Yes, I will. Uh, Lord kiss freak. I will send you that information. Oh, in the chat or read it out for LKF. Okay. Yep. All right. Lord Kiss Freak. Polar bread. Is that what that is? Lord Kiss Freak. In the chat right now is Miss Sunrise One's email address. It, it doesn't really look appetizing, so I don't really know what it is. I mean, it might look more appetizing if I knew what it was. I was Team Jacob until he imprinted on a baby, and now I'm still conflicted. I don't want Edward's ice pee-pee. Pee-pee. Yeah, no, I'm not into that either. So what is polar bread? Wages World is planning on simulcasting. 88% where you are, LKF. Okay. We're nowhere near close to the path, so we'll probably live stream NASA. Yeah. That's probably your best bet, honestly. I love I love watching NASA TV. I spent... Your, Brian Lucas is going to watch it from his front yard. Okay. Not in the path out here in California. I think in the yard 2000, there was a total eclipse in Prescott and my mom made me a box to view it in safely. I was so freaking happy. All those little things I miss. Yeah, it's Amber June. We're not anywhere near the path either. I'm glad that you have those memories though. That's amazing. No, not pilot bread. Polar. Polar bread. Hmm. 
I can't really see that. And you just sent me a post from the lifeboat group and I just, I haven't joined there yet. Oh, and Tamara June sent me an item for not gross melatonin. Yay. Thank you, Tamara June. Sunshines is in the path 100%. Now I want to know what this polar bread is. It doesn't look like bread. It looks like matzah. With strawberry butter on or pinku oh you just approved me in the group okay cool thanks alan yeah what time is it supposed to happen i have no idea Total Eclipse of the Cat. Yes. Perfect. Don't shame shame me. It's, you know, not like I'm in enough groups anyway, right? Come on now. Shaming me. 10, 15 a.m. Pacific time, so uh, quarter after one, your time, half. Yeah, you do have a toad suck. Yeah, it's 1.15 Eastern. 10.15 Pacific is 1.15 Eastern. Polar bread is so good. Well, it's not the normal kind of bread, but some fluffy bread thing. Oh, it doesn't look fluffy. Now I'm really interested. And what's the stuff on top of it, Maya? I was told there would be no math. Indeed. I'll probably be asleep too, but I may try to set an alarm, watch it on NASA, I don't know that we're going to get a whole lot here because it's going to be cloudy, as far as I know. Thank you for the approval, by the way, Alan. I appreciate that. Alan! Alan! I just, I'm, I'm in so many stinking Facebook groups. <sighs> Sunshine's your battery's near bread, near dead. See, I was reading something about bread. It's polar bread with caviar, my hubby's favorite. I thought it was funny that it looked like a pizza. It looked like a pizza with pink frosting. What kind of caviar is that? I'm assuming that you mean caviar the same way we all mean caviar, meaning fish eggs. I talked to... God and weathermen and postponed clouds. Well, no wonder your batteries are dead, sunshines. Eclipse. Science presupposes false heliocentric theory from hell. Moon occlusion actually caused by space bears. Oh. Well, that makes sense. Space bears. You're really on one about the heliocentrism, sir. You kind of give yourself away a little bit. Just 
Just saying. Not saying. Just saying. Tamber June. Hey, guys, just want to tell you that thank you for all your support this past week. You've helped me want to come back and not hide under the covers for the whole day. Thank you all for our corner booth. I love, I love our corner booth. And you are so welcome. And thank you for coming back and hanging out in the corner booth. We love you. And I'm so glad that you're not hiding under the bed all day or under the covers or under anything. I'm glad you're here. And for Miss Summer, just in case she's still awake and, and listening. Oh, wait, I need to warn people first. I'm warning you first that there will be uh, ice clinking ASMR, a.k.a. wind chimes. Close your ears for about 10 seconds. You're clear. The ice was just at the perfect point in the glass and in its melting journey. So I had to. Um, but Tambor, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming back to the corner booth. We're happy to have you here. Cheers, y'all. Polar Bread is a brand name. It's semi-sweet and really soft. See, and it doesn't look soft. It looks like matzo. That's fascinating. Well, now I'm going to have to get some of that. Nicole Yonker wants to see Space Bears. Jeep Caviar is good. Jeeps make caviar? Is that like little matchbox car? Jeeps? Just a whole lot of them? I'm so confused right now. I thought it was space whales, not space bears. Yes. We are always here to penetrate you with vagina puns. I figured that out about you, Char. Space bears, did Fozzie Bear fly to the moon? Fly me to the moon. I thought it was random quantum singularities. Well, I mean, it could be, could be that too. We're glad to know you, Tamber June. Our corner booth is cool, and so is chocolate and ice, and good night. Good night, sunshines. Zenu Marlene. Hell yes. Pamela S.P. Butterfly, I pulverize old matzo and turn it into crumbs so I can use it for breading and matzo ball soup. Is that what, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that what matzo brai is? I thought that's what matzo brai was. It was basically broken matzo. 
Nicole Yonker, our Jeep doesn't do that. Yeah, I don't know. I had a space bear dentist. He was a molar bear. His space whale wife was an orchidontist. All right, you. Okay. Well, shit, I done fall to sleep waiting for 2 a.m. And now look and let me live under the stars. Add Mazza to the list, please. Okay, Alan. You got it. Pamela, take a look in the chat. I think that's how it's spelled, but I've been wrong before. I don't speak the language of the chosen, and I never went to Hebrew school. We're glad you're here, Kathy Mitchell, by the way. We certainly are. Oh, I should do responsible youtube -y things, shouldn't I? Hi, guys. We're happy you're here. Welcome. Welcome to the corner booth. Um, whether you're in the chat or just lurking and not participating, you're welcome here. And we're glad that you're here. If you would be so kind as to do thumbs up or thumbs down, whichever you choose. And if you are choosing thumbs up, please also go ahead and hit subscribe or check to see if you're still subscribed. YouTube has a way of being weird about things and unsubscribing people when they least expect it. So please hit the subscribe or check to see that you're still subscribed. Um... There's the thumbs up, the thumbs down. You can leave comments after this chat, which also makes the algorithm really happy. Algorithm likes engagement. So even if you're not live chatting, which is fine, it's fine. No pressure. Um, you're welcome to leave a comment afterwards just to let us know that you're here. We love to see it. Um, we do have memberships open for the low, low price of $2.99 per month. I only have one limo, one level. That's all we really need, right? Um, and uh, then you get special emojis and a cute little badge next to your name and all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, and more perks will follow as soon as I figure out what on earth to do. Um, if you want to contact me, my email address is down below in the description box, as is my PayPal and the Venmo that Denver Stevo made me get if you wish to support the channel in a way that YouTube doesn't devour 30% of it. Thanks so much. This has been your public service announcement. Uh, your public service announcement. Pubic service. I, what? I, mm, okay, whatever. Jenna G, sleep sweet. Rest well, honey. And the thing is going pating. Let's take a look. Yes, fish eggs often for breakfast. Yes, so it is caviar. This is the type of caviar that she has put on the polar bread. That's the brand. And uh, apparently very popular breakfast there.
No shame in an elastic waistband, Alan. None. Not a drop of shame. Misbehaving is going to bed. Good night to you as well. Sleep sweet. Y'all were lost on the floor for a minute. Under the bed even. See, that's that's how we get. That's how we get. We're sneaky, insidious little bastards. Bry is pronounced like fry. Okay, good. So I did it right, Pamela. Matzo Bry. See, and I must be mistaken on it because I thought it was just bashed up matzo. Like the the matzo that didn't make it into the box in, in its beautiful, pristine sheets. Um, so, my bad. But, you know, this is what happens. I'm, I'm not one of the chosen. I am merely chosen adjacent. So um, I have picked up little bits of knowledge and enough to make a, a joke here and there. But I, uh, don't have quite the in-depth knowledge that I wish I had, but I didn't mean to type in the next line to fly me to the moon. It just happened. You know, Kathy Mitchell, that's what we do. It's just, it's just what we do and it's okay. Jill of all trades, master of none. I mean, I know bits and pieces about a lot of stuff, but I'm not expert in very many, or I don't even have in-depth knowledge on a lot of stuff. I just, you know, the stuff that I do know, I know really solidly, but you know things, half. And you're fucking hilarious on top of it. But yeah, you're smarter than you give yourself credit for. Knock it off. Don't talk about my friend like that. Hi, Mango Tea. Oh my God. Hi. Okay. Hang on just a second. Back when I was a court clerk, it was my turn to create the meeting minutes. When it came to an item regarding the public service team, I left out the L. Fortunately, my supervisor caught it. Oh my God, the pubic service team. That's amazing. Sir, I am so happy to see you. Hi. How are you doing? You're up late. It's about, yes, it is. Yes, it is, Form 13909. I am so happy you're here. I honestly was not sure that this was going to happen ever again. So I am super happy that you're here. Welcome. It's almost 1 a.m. there. Are you just stuck with being insomniac? Is it a pain thing or are you awake because you slept all day? Let us know. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy you're here. There we go. Yeah. Prayers up for all your health stuff and everything. For sure. For sure. We need ones in the chat for, for the, the mighty mango. Lots of oxy and oxy for your pain, but hanging in there day by day. I am so happy you're here. I am so happy that you're here. I was just thinking about you earlier today because I thought I was going to hear from you and I hadn't. And so I was, I was wondering, I was wondering if, if you were still hanging around with us and you are, and I am so happy to see you in here. And I'm sorry that you have to be on all of the drugs, but I'm really happy that you're here. 
in more ways than one, I'm, I'm happy that you're just still walking around or, you know, being all jacked up on the drugs around or whatever, but I'm glad you're still with us. Brain MRI on Wednesday, getting Fent patches this week from my new pain doctor. That's how bad the pain is. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not surprised about it. Um, but wow, you chose to stick it out. That could not have been an easy choice. I, for one, think the world is a better place with you in it and with your voice being heard. I love you so much. And I'm so glad that you're still with us and that you are fighting your tiny little ass off. And I am certain that your husband feels the same. So, oh man. Yes. Well, and, and it's, it's not even cancer pain. He's got something Jilbo that I don't remember what it's called. I want to think it's NRE. Am I incorrect, Steve? I might be. Um, I don't remember. Ooh, here's Tambor June with the straight dirt. Had those patches. Ask about the withdrawal period at the end of the 24, 48 hours. Tegaderm helps them stay on. I bet it does. I did paper tape the edges of the patch sometimes. Neurofibromatosis type 2. Okay, that's what it is. But yeah, check it out, Steve. Tegaderm, paper tape. Yeah. I love these fun, helpful little tips that we get in here from just randomly. Neurofibromatosis type 2. I have to look that up. Um, 48 hours versus 72 for the patches they said haven't tried yet. Okay. All right. I'm writing it down so I can look it up. Um, matosis type two. Um, I will tell you that the doctor is now telling me you've been diagnosed with NF2 seventh. Seriously. There you go. You've got a another person in there fighting with you. Yeah, do you have tumors too? Um, Steve, uh, my doctor has has the new one says, oh, he's got the he's got the tumors as well. Fuck. my diagnosis doesn't have, isn't touching this. It's not as important. So God damn. Yep. Yep. Steve's are all internal. Uh, sevenths are all internal. And so are Sora Steve Mangos. Oh my God. I love this. I love that we're all here in the corner booth. I love that everybody's just hanging out and we are learning things about each other. And when we talk about this shit, it reduces the stigma. And we found, we find other people who are suffering wildly enough from the same fucking rare ass random ass disorder amazing amazing <laughs>
I love this corner booth. This is the best corner booth ever. This broadcast is not sponsored by Denny's or IHOP or Norms or any of the other all night places. Right? I am so glad you stopped in, Steve, because if you hadn't stopped in and started talking about what you're going through, nope, seventh is also called Steve. I love this. I love this so much. Now, Who's been prescribed tramadol? Is nausea and passing out a thing? Nausea can be. Um, it hits me differently than it hits other people. Tramadol, while not technically an opiate, is kind of like opiate light. Um, it's next door to the opiate family, but isn't quite an opiate and has a lot of the same um, side effects as opiates can, which means that the nausea, the itching, the skin itching, um, the drowsy, drowsiness, whatever, those, yeah, that, that can happen. No, you're not, you're not taking over with your health struggles at all, at all. And if you hadn't jumped in, then we wouldn't know that there was another person with the same fucking diagnosis as rare it is as it is. So I'm really glad that you jumped in. I'm super glad that you jumped in. Oh my God. I love it. Yeah. Zena Marlene for all y'all. All, all y'all. I love that this corner booth has rounded corners and soft, soft coverings. Yes, Kathy Mitchell. Yes, it do. I love this so much. Yeah, and you've, you've no reason to apologize. Can I stand between the Steves and announce the creation of a Steve sandwich? Well, I guess it would have to be up to the Steves. Yes, we are, we are grateful for you, for both of you. It's handy to chat pain med anecdotes. Yeah, it is. Oh, you've never been itchy. Good for you. Jilbo is now three weeks THC free. Insane we're both here after I literally almost self-deleted twice only three to four weeks ago from this horrific condition. Yeah, it is insane. Like I said, I, I, your popping in was absolutely the last thing that I expected because I kind of figured that you were already gone. So the fact that you're here just makes me so stinking happy. And I imagine that seventh is probably, although not happy that somebody else has that diagnosis, kind of relieved that somebody else has that diagnosis. Char also takes Celebrex wondering if it actually makes me sleepy during the day. That's something that I haven't tried. Nobody's tried me on it. I don't know if it's, is it a biologic? I don't know. They ruled out all the RA things, all the autoimmune shit for me. They're calling it some kind of a spondylosis, spondylitis, spondylitis. Um, not sure what kind it is. I stack paracetamol, Celebrex, and 
tramadol at night. Yeah, we don't really have paracetamol here in the States, although I know they have it up in our nation's hat and they have it in the UK. We don't really have it here. LKF missed your comment. I'm sorry. I'm scared to try the F patch, but I'm desperate for strong relief. Of course you are. Try the F patch. If it gets to the point where you're scraping the, the goo off and eating it, then you know that you have a problem that's gone beyond the pain. And that's more about getting messed up. Um, but try the F patches. Honey, nothing else has been working. Try them. Yes. Yeah, you can you can come on over to the to the lifeboat. Come on over to the lifeboat. 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern time every day. So that's 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. It's on the sevens for you. Mr. Mango. Um, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. They're all about connection. They're all about support, you know, and whether you're dealing with chronic pain, if you're worried about addiction, if you're worried about, you know, whatever you're working through, those people have been pretty awesome. And it's, it really is. It's, it's, it's not preachy. They're, they're about connection. They're about support. And I love it. So on both morphine, oxycodone, and clonopin, I'm tapering off the clonopin very slowly, as long as it's slowly. Just do it slowly, Jilbo. You don't want to. You don't want to cold turkey off of any of the benzos, ever. I told my doctor pain woke me up and asked if there was an extended relief version of my pain medication. Most doctors I've dealt with don't realize that there are tramadol ER and others. Yeah, the extended release. Yep. Paracetamol is not Tylenol. Tylenol is acetaminophen. Paracetamol is something slightly different. My hubby was on morphine and Norco and just switched to Subutex. Interesting. It's been good to have one pill and little side effects. And has the Subutex been working? That's fascinating that they would swap those out for Subutex. Definitely interested in knowing how that's working for chronic pain. They need to do some spine injection in the next few weeks too by my thoracic tumor. So it's literally one thing after the next year. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yep. You'd be welcome and supported on the lifeboat. Oh, he's been by the lifeboat a few weeks ago. Nice. Very nice. Glad to see it. Yep, you're welcome anytime. Delauded worked best for Form 13 for legit pain relief. I do like Delauded, even though it gives me pruritus, but I do like it. I do like it. It makes the pain fuck off. Sophia! Hey, girl. Good to see ya. We're all falling apart with chronic pain. Yeah, no shit. Literally the OxyContin let me go get ice cream with my husband for an hour with no pain. When I've been bed bound 20 to 22 hours daily and couldn't go out. Yep. Yep. <sighs> 
That's amazing, though, the fact that that you can do that, that you did get to do that. I, I love that for you. Seriously. I don't remember what no pain feels like. I just kind of exist inside of it at this point. Um, but the doctor is... Um, the new doctor is, is working on some things and I'm so glad that you got to get up and go and have ice cream with your husband. I bet it was fucking delicious ice cream too. Oh, paracetamol is acetaminophen. Okay. Good to know. Thank you very much. Learning. I love learning. Um, yeah, we are all falling apart, but I bet that was some delicious fucking ice cream. And I love that for you. Okay. I've sent you some emails. He sent me some messages. I don't think I've gotten... Yeah, I've gotten a recipe for matzo brai. But no, I got some messages from LKF. Thank you, Miss Sunrise Dawn. Really surprised that the subutex is working, but the taper down in 24 hours, nothing in between was awful. Yeah, I bet it was. Yep, it's crazy when I felt so normal and been thinking once I get the new meds this week, maybe I can resume my life a bit, maybe make some YouTube videos. Or just maybe resume your life a little bit and see how it feels. And maybe you can start going back to school a little bit. Because it, it kills me that you had to, you know, I mean, that you've had to put your life on hold so much and that you can't, you can't continue doing with what you feel is your calling. So that's, that's frustrating. And I can't even, it, it's frustrating for me and I don't live in your body. So I can't even imagine how frustrating it has to be for you. Um, how is my pain lately? I mean, you know, some days are better than others. My baseline is about a four on a standard person's one to 10 pain scale. Um, but what is another person's four is basically my zero. That's where I start at the beginning of the day. And where it goes from there depends on what I have to do. You know, do I have to take the trash out? Do I have to shovel fucking snow? Do I have to, what do I have to do? You know, and unfortunately it all involves living my life. Sometimes I have to wash half a sink full of dishes and I'm useful for, or useless for, you know, the next three hours afterwards because I'm so busy having muscle spasms along my rib cage in the back that I, it literally takes my breath away. Um, I did find out that they have found uh, arthritis and bone spurs in both cervical and lumbar vertebrae. Um, so that's, and that was from films that were taken three, four years ago. So, uh, my doctor and I are both under the impression that if we were, hi, Marion Ann Bays, good to see you. Welcome. The doctor and I are both under the impression that if we were to take fresh films, that it's probably worse. So who knows? But he, he is, he did say something in my chart about uh, spondylitis, although it's not the ankylosing kind. 
Um, I don't have McMars disease. Um, but yeah. Shar says, I'm starting to cry a bit because I think I've been in survival mode with my pain for a while and I'm realizing a bit how bad it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Shar. That stinks. But know that you're not alone. There's a lot of us here who are feeling very similar. And most of us don't have delightfully fluffy Porpingtons to snuggle. Sure, your mind normalizes it. We, we learn to exist inside the pain. And we don't talk about it much. Um, just because, you know, we don't want to be seen as nattering or being a pain in the ass or whining or anything else. That's, that's just, you know, we're trying not to be that person, but we have to speak about it. I don't believe in stigma for mental health. I don't believe in stigma for physical health. And I think that we should all be as transparent as we are um, comfortable being so that we're normalizing what's going on with us. Like it gets old saying it over and over every day. Oh, I know, Char. I mean, every time I walk into the doctor's office, he's like, hey, how are you feeling? And I'm like, well, everything hurts and I'm dying. What's new? I haven't shown him the uh, the better pain scale from hyperbole and a half, but I feel like maybe I should. Because, man, that's, yeah, 1,000%. For those of us that fight every day with chronic pain, our pain tolerance and the pain scale is so skewed that no matter how we explain it, there's no way for it to be accurate. Yeah. Exist inside the pain. That's what I do. I'm not going to let it take over my life, but that's... You know, I had to find a way to, to, you know, cause it's not like I can just be like, okay, I give up and lie down. And then all of a sudden it's done. Boom. And I don't have to deal with it anymore. It doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that. We don't get to do that. So, you know, we keep going. I hate how doctors treat you like a drug addict when you need pain meds. When you have the absolute gall, when you have the balls the size of dump trucks to ask for pain relief. Right? Fuck that. Marion Ann Bays, I'm on a lot of medication. Just been told that I have about five years to live. That sucks, Marion. But I'm glad you're here. We see you. I was going to say I've heard of ankylosing spondylitis and that's super painful. Wonder if the meds for that could help your type. I don't know. I don't know. He didn't say it was the ankylosing spot kind. Um, but uh, he did write something about spondylitis in my chart. So who knows? That automatic I'm fine is just not in me anymore. Now I say that I'm doing my best. Yep. People ask me how I do getting by, or I tell them I'm still upright because that's my victory, you know?
Got to explain how it affects quality of life and how it impacts your function for doctors to weigh pros and cons to prescribe. Yeah. And they don't want to in any case because they very frequently conflate dependence with addiction. They're not the same thing. But um, the other thing, too, is that, I mean, I've been straight up with my doctor. And I've told him how exhausting it is that I know the exact medication cocktail that will make me able to function like a normal human being, even when it's a really bad pain day and I don't think I can get out of bed. And on those days, I literally have nothing that I can take to help get me out of bed because nobody wants to prescribe anything. And if I tell them what the exact cocktail is, then they look at me like I'm ready to take to the spike again. Again, like I, like I've done that before. I have not, but they're, they're looking at me like, like I'm just hanging out with a needle hanging out of my arm. And that's not the case. I just know what works for me. And I have done for a long time. I'm freaking 50, you know, and I've been in pain for literally decades. So I know what works for me. They don't want to hear it. And he said, so what do you, what do you do on those days? I said, I take a pill. Well, yeah, but if nobody's prescribing it for you, where did you get it? In Mexico, where I bought it over the counter. I buy Flexerol over the counter there, and I buy Tramadol over the counter there. And it's 100% legal. Stop me. Give me a reason to take something else. Help me. I've been hanging on by a thread psychologically for a few years now, and I keep thinking the house of cards will fall and force me to address it, but it never happens. You know, you've mentioned something about this before, about how you've been in a really difficult place. And I can only say again, that if there's any way that I can help you, even if you just need an ear, I'm not going to send you one in the mail. My name isn't Vincent, but um, I'm happy to listen. And I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, every time the doc asks my pain scale, I say three to four, but that's what I've come to learn to live with. Yep. Oh, Pamela SP Butterfly. I wish I had that magic wand too. Yeah, totally the scale. Also, I'm finding it shifts. Like finally I said, hey, ibuprofen does fuck all. And since then she gave me Celebrex and Tramadol. Nice. I tell them ibuprofen does fuck all. And then they accuse me of wanting, of being addicted to narcotics. What I thought was a 10 pain 10 years ago is maybe a five now. Yep, because you learn to exist inside of it. I modify my pain scale for docs instead of being a 10 being the worst pain I've ever felt. 10 is when the pain is bad enough that I can't concentrate on anything else. They understand that. Fair. That's fair. But see, the other thing is that they, the brain doesn't allow you to remember actual pain, like to bring that back the sensation of that pain, like it will allow you to bring back other sensations. Your brain protects you in that way. So, and you can't imagine pain. So when they say, oh, well, zero is no pain and 10 is the worst pain that you can imagine. Yep. 
you're asking me to do something that I can't do. So I tell them, okay, 10 is the worst pain that I have experienced. And I've had viral meningitis. That's my 10. My actual skull felt like a rotten pumpkin that was going to collapse in on itself at any time if I moved too quickly. That's my 10. And even though I speak from experience, they still look at me like, oh, well, I must just want that handful of Percocets so I can go and sell them on the streets. Fucking please. I took the bus standing with a two-day-old twisted knee because I could finally get the stairs down safely myself. The doctor thought I was simulating. Isn't that fun? I love it when they think I'm faking. Prednisone and I are in a battle here. Ooh, the battle with Pred is not a pretty one here. I now know why I found this place, Divine Intervention. That's right. You found us because you were supposed to. And we can all sing, you are not alone. Yeah, that's what we do. I think I'm realizing that a six out of 10 on the pain on an ordinary day is kind of a scream cry depressing, actually. Yeah, but it's... It's who we are. It's how we exist. Once I explained my conditions and had the surgery last year, my clients started to understand just how much pain I live with every day. They've been so understanding. And that's amazing. I love it. I love that your clients, I mean, there's no reason your clients shouldn't love you, right? But I, I love that they've been super understanding for you. Exist in my tinnitus and anxiety. Don't complain. And when you say something, people seem surprised. <laughs> oh, no shit. Don't they? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I exist within it. But I'm loud about it, too. I'm not constantly banging on about it. But when people ask, I'm, I'm not about a about to lie and say that I'm doing great because chances are I'm not. And if it's a bad pain day or a bad anxiety day or whatever, I'm going to say something. And I think you should too. Oh my God, those freaking looks the doctor gives you when you say you need pain meds. Yep. We have high cost protection system for medicines in Sweden. You pay a maximum of $260 per year. God, I fucking wish. Yeah. Ooh. Prednisone induced psychosis was the worst few weeks of my life, but I came out of it. Stay strong and abide by the tapering guidelines, even if you feel better. Wise words from Form 13. When asked how I am, I lie. Say if I were any better. I'd have to be twins. Nice. I feel so bad when I need a four-hour nap and I feel so guilty and the house is messy and there's so much to do. Girl, stop. Because you're putting the kind of expectations that your parents had on you. And you don't need that. Tijuana is the spot. I have a doctor there who also prescribes. We can go together. I haven't been to TJ in a long time. But I would totally go there with you. Fuck yeah. Give me an excuse to go out to the West Coast anyway.
First, they create the opioid crisis by overprescribing. Then they decide to take it away from the people that need it by creating an opiate shortage. A completely manufactured opiate shortage. Yes. Mm hmm. Quality of life. Yes. Very sobering in hindsight. Aren't they, though, smoke? I have DJD and migraine. Four out of 10 is my baseline. My back and left hip always hurt, and I never have less than pressure in my left temple. Yep. Yep. I couldn't even take Tylenol in Scientology, and now I'll take whatever. I won't take whatever. Like, if a doctor tried to give me OxyContin, I would tell him no. Because it makes me so miserable. The side effects for it for me are miserable. Percocet, I can take. Ideally, I want a Vicodin 5 and a Flexeril. That cocktail doesn't make me pain-free, but it also doesn't make me stupid or sleepy. It takes the edge off and I can function. And it's delightful. But you tell them that. And they look at you like maybe you should be on the line at the methadone clinic. I fucking hate that. I hate the stigma. Right you are. They ask what they can do to help, but when you tell them, they look at you like you're seeking and you're not. And who the hell cares if I get addicted if it helps me? You know what? Again, why are we conflating addiction and dependence? There are two different things. And if it works, don't fix it. I think it really does take a long and trusting relationship with a doc. Like she sent me for a CT and MRI and x-ray so she knows what's causing my pain. They still don't know what's causing my pain. They know what's causing some of it. They don't know what's causing the rest of it. Like, yeah, bone spurs and arthritis in my cervical and lumbar spine, but that doesn't explain the hands or the elbows or the knees or the hips or the anything else. So who the fuck knows? Can we have a moment how tired pain makes you feel, which is such a separate fucking layer of experience? Validation years right now. Yeah. Validation tears right now. Yeah. Yeah. We see you. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. It is absolutely exhausting. And loneliness is physically painful. Yeah. It's amazing. We're taking a bath with Miss Sunrise Dawn in the hopes that it will relieve the arthritis pain in her hips. Ah, good old rotten pumpkin skull. Yeah, it was fun. Six weeks of that. Six solid weeks. My worst pain is not the doctor's worst pain. Exactly. Totally agree regarding the pain scale. Like, I can't imagine what it would feel like to be tortured in a prison camp or something. I just know these gallstones are intolerable. Exactly. Hi, SP Fanny. Boy, you walked in at a really uplifting time. Whenever I go to the ER and my diverticulitis flares up, I always tell them I'm at an 11. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the advice from people is always fascinating. Yes, I agree, Kathy Mitchell. How much tramadol do I take? Not much. She said I should go up from 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams. I don't know if, let me check to see if I have it in my purse. That's my purse. I don't know you. Um, 
I know I have something in my purse. I just don't know if it's the flex roll or the tram at all. It's not much. It's not a high dosage, honestly, and it still gives me the pruritus, but it also, it doesn't knock me out. It actually kind of makes me buzz a little bit. Um, fuck, it might be downstairs. I thought it was in my purse. Then again, maybe my purse is just too full of bullshit. Here we go. 100 milligram. But I very rarely take it. Because I don't, I only take it on the days when I can't get out of bed. L5 to L3 fuse, then all problems with COVID shot, then the stroke over Thanksgiving. I love the scale comparisons I've found, my peeps. Yes. Yes. We also have high cost health health care coverage and it is $130 per year. Ambulance transport is also included in this. <laughs> Woo. For me, it's so hard when you look like you're okay. So they act like you're faking. When I finally start walking with a cane, people were nicer. Of course. But you know what? That's the thing is that some disabilities are invisible. You can't see a headache, but when somebody tells you that they had a headache, you're not going to doubt them. I don't know why it doesn't look, it doesn't work the same way with all the other kinds of pain, but people think that if they can't see it or if you don't perform it for them, then it must not be happening. And if you perform it too well and too accurately, then you're just hysterical. I mean, damned if you do and damned if you don't. Going up to 100 milligrams, Tremadol was kind of magic, but I don't want to take it every day and have it be less effective. That's fair. But you know what? You, you do what you need to do to get by. Still catching up, SP Fanny. I am disappointed you are not sponsored by Hooters. This broadcast is not sponsored by Hooters. However, that's okay. Honestly, because um, the only thing I really like there is their fried pickles. Okay. It's interesting how meds, some meds work so well for one person and the next it does nothing or has bad side effects. I know it's fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. Um, and I don't know, I don't know even what to say about that, but you know, it just, it just really is. Yeah. Wanting to function new concept to some doctors, right? Oh my God. During assessment, that's how I ask about pain. On a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is the worst pain you have experienced, what is your pain right now? Yep. Yeah, I love that. I love that because it's realistic. It's significantly more realistic. And, you know, it gives people something that they can actually relate to as opposed to trying to imagine, well, you know, I mean, there's being put feet first through a wood chipper and there's ax murderer, but then there's being mauled by a bear. And I mean, 10 being the worst pain that you can imagine. Oh, Smoke, are you out? Okay, good night. Sleep sweet, Smoke. Rest well, I hope. In our house, we depend on medications to stay healthy and make our lives better. Why can't docs see pain meds for chronic pain the way they see levothyroxine? Because that would make sense. 
because that would be logical. And it would also fly in the face of everything that uh, a lot of people uh, in various government agencies have been telling them. Yeah. Matrix, you're back. Welcome back, Matrix. Have any experience with Parkinson's medications, Maddow Park and Maddow Park Quick? I do not. I have no experience with that, actually, but maybe somebody in the chat does. I know that we've got some nursey pants in here. No, 100 milligram tramadol is not low. Like when my mom had a, a, when she had her carpal tunnel surgery, they gave her 50 milligram tramadol. And mom says that she wasn't into it, that it, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't taking her pain away. And I'm like, well, I have 100 milligram. Do you want that? But then she was complaining about the pruritus and her face went bright red and blotchy. So she's not allowed to take tramadol anymore. Does nobody else use the Wong Baker pain scale? No, I don't I don't know what pain scale that is. 100 milligram tramadol equals 20 milligrams of morphine. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. My dad was on L-DOPA when he was misdiagnosed with Parkinson's. Okay. Matrix is lying here listening. They know what is causing my pain, but they changed it up because, you know, addiction. Of course. I have three deteriorated discs that are wrapped in gold old arthur and my static nerve is trapped in there too wow that sucks i take drugs i take drugs for my autonomic nervous system failure it has saved my life okay Yes, Ellen, I got that joke. It's a movie reference. Mm -hmm. Maximum safe dose for tramadol is 100 milligrams a day. Yeah. And I, I maybe take it once a day. And that happens. Oh, good old arthritis. That's what I thought you meant, Kathy Mitchell. Um, I take it maybe once in a day on a bad day and I try to keep those to maybe three times a month. The rest of it, I just grin and bear it. We all have different chemical makeup. This is how it was explained to me about med effects. Yep, that makes sense. I have a brother who has Parkinson's and medicine doesn't work as it should. The doctors think he is after drugs. Well, that's fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry, Ms. Ekblama. When anyone says Hef in the chat, I have to go look at what I missed. Hef always gold comments. Oh, yeah. No, she's amazing. She's She is absolutely a queen. Oh, my God. Sometimes a doc really makes you feel like they're prescribing you. Like scratch your face, stealing VCR's level of fentanyl. Google says 400 milligrams of, a day. Tramadol is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. One 100 milligram tablet four times a day but that's the max safe dose. So try not to get there. But that should also make you feel better that if you're doing 100 milligrams a day, you're in good shape. Huh. 
Hi, what a nice surprise to see you're still up. Hello, people, places, and perspectives. We're glad to see you. Arriving late. Oh, yes, physical pain. Oh, my. Over 22 years, my body's chronic, yet so many miracles have happened in my body, too. Grateful. Yep. No, I've, I've been in pain for literally decades. Like, since right before my 20s. They have no issues giving me insulin for my diabetes. I know. And yet other medications. Heaven forbid. One thing I love about my orthopedic doctor is he asks the pain scale in the context of my tolerance and knows that I still walk around on an eight without simulating. He even trusts my judgment. That's amazing. That's incredible. Good for you and your doctor. I need a doctor who will prescribe Addies and antidepressants and maybe some Seroquel or something without asking a lot of personal questions or trying to convince me that CBR did not have good tech. Well, yes. Yes. Sarah Turner. Hello. Good morning, Cricket. Listening from the dance floor, what the store calls the sales floor. Sending hugs and love at all. Well, we send them right back to you, Sarah Turner, and I'm really glad that you came to join us. Hate the term drug seeking. Yes, of course, anyone going to a hospital for any reason wants meds to feel better. It's so stigmatizing and degrading calling people drug seekers who have legit pain. I agree with you. I agree with you. You know what? I'm not looking to get high. I am looking for relief. And when I'm dealing with a doctor, they're the person who has the magic authority to provide that relief like and in my case like Stephen, obviously with you you have a diagnosis they know what's wrong they know what the problem is so the fact that you've had challenges getting pain medication that's suitable to your situation is breathtaking to me and really wrong on a number of different levels. For me, I've been in pain for decades. It's just a thing. Nobody can really figure it out. It's not Lyme's. It's not autoimmune. We've tested for Lyme's and then we tested for Lyme's again. And then we took 11 vials of blood to test for everything autoimmune. And we've done MRIs and we've done x-rays and we've done more of that stuff. And then we tried me on all the rheumatological things, except biologics. We didn't go there because everything else either gave me a rash or didn't do a goddamn thing. Or with the, uh, with the one that I had to inject into my fat every week, um, that one just made me nauseous for an entire 24 hours. Um, but it didn't really do anything else. So they don't know what's wrong with me. And I get that giving somebody a painkiller can mask symptoms. I understand that. But if I'm not taking it every day, then you have all the rest of the days that I'm not taking it to try to figure out when I present not on that medication, what the fuck is wrong with me? But no, we don't want to mask any of your symptoms. And so we're not going to give you any painkillers. Um, cause we really find it, want to, want to find out what's wrong with you. Okay. Okay. But it's literally been three-fifths of my life that I've been dealing with this. How is that doing no harm? I am relief seeking. And if relief comes in the form of a drug, 
even if I only take it once or twice a month? Come on. I just, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Wong Baker is for pediatric patients. Oh, okay. I never used that. I use the hyperbole and a half better pain scale. And I'm really surprised that I haven't shown it to my new doctor yet because I need to. Let's see. I think the whole song and dance of having to go to a doctor is humiliating sometimes, even if I get what I need. Adderall should be OTC for adults. <laughs> yeah. Vets treat a dog's pain, but why won't they treat human pain? Well, because dogs can't tell you how they feel, but it's clear that they feel miserable because they're limping or something. Or having a difficult time getting up the bed. Or they'll pee on the porch because they can't make it down the stairs. Is that what I need to do? Sleep on the floor and pee on the porch? Hef is injecting her fat as we speak. Very nice. Doctors are the ones who created the problem, then act like we are drug-seeking. You just want relief from chronic pain. Yeah. Can I have a day where it doesn't hurt? If I want Adderall, I have to go to a doctor, lie, go to a pharmacy. If I settle for something much dirtier, I can have it 20 minutes with no grilling. Yeah. Well, there's that. I know the frustration. I was undiagnosed for years and years. I hope they can nail it down for you to find a diagnosis. Doctors need to take their oath to do no harm seriously with patients in pain. Yeah. But instead, the larger concern is, well, if I prescribe for one person's pain, then I'm going to have to prescribe for everybody's pain because word's going to get out. My brother is an EMT and there's no real difference in behavior. There's a real difference in behavior when you're in pain and need help or just want to get high. You recognize fast. Yeah, absolutely. I took half a Percocet five milligram once and was bouncing off the walls. Some pain meds make me super hyper. You know, NyQuil used to do that for me. Instead of knocking me out with the original green death flavor. I'd, I'd have to run around the block 15 times. So they'd rather not treat your pain via masking it to let you suffer when they can't figure it out. So, hey, let's not treat the pain while they get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I've been told. Yeah, absolutely. It's good times. I love it. I'm super happy. Hopefully the new doctor is, is, uh, I mean, he seems like he's curious. He seems like he's, he's trying to find answers and he's looking at different avenues of things. Um, I guess we'll, you know, we'll see because it's fucking exhausting, man. I have a nerve tumor on the nerve that hurts like crazy when you hit your elbow in that spot. <gasps> Oh, I can't even imagine. So I have that pain in my arm more or less all the time. <gasps> oh, 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 honey, no. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oof. They, thank you for sharing this. I can relate for sure. Did they say fibromyalgia for you? No. They thought maybe when all the rheumatological stuff wasn't working, maybe. And so they tried me on Lyrica and switched my antidepressants to one that works better with Lyrica, but was in the same family as the one that I was already on. And Lyrica didn't do anything. And because there's no test for fibro, we still don't know what's wrong with me. 
some kind of spondylitis? Maybe fibro? Maybe neurological? We don't know. It's fun. Part of the problem is that doctors are overachieving normies with no personal exposure to drug culture. Possibly. They need to know that not everyone who needs chemicals to function is a, is a degraded being. Yeah. Here's hoping for healing for us all. Got to sleep. Good night. Good night. Care for JC. Sleep sweet. Rest well. Oh, see, you are going to hear, you are so going to hear from people with migraines. I hear from people with migraines. I'm not discounting migraines at all. Never in the world would I discount migraines. It's just that when, when, okay, so people who have migraines probably aren't believed because there are some who have never had a migraine and so they don't know how bad it is. But when somebody tells you, hey, you know what? I got to stay home. I'm not going to make it to lunch to hang out with all of you guys. Um, I'm going to, I have a headache. I have a really bad headache and I think I need to just be in a dark room for a few hours, days, whatever. Um, nobody gives you shit about that. Or very few people do. And if they do, they're most likely told to go fuck themselves with any other kind of pain, especially if you can't see it. And if it's not being performed, then it may as well not even exist. And if it is being performed, if you're showing people how much pain you're in by making a face or by making noises or by moving differently, well, then you're being dramatic. So, you know, there's no way to win. VA orthopedic doctor told me my knee pain is in my head. Haven't been back since. While doing keto, started intake of more bone broth, homemade. I love bone broth. And glucosamine daily lost almost all pain. Very lucky. Yes, you are, Sarah. Yes, you are. Okay, just took my tramadol after suffering through my day thinking I shouldn't have it. I'm a bit less worried. Thank you all. Good. I'm glad that you're less worried, Char. If your doctor is telling you to take the pain med, take the pain med. Have took a Roxy once, never again. I don't think I've ever taken a Roxy. That one hasn't been given to me. Yes, it is frustrating, people, places, and perspectives. It sure is. And Zena Marlene to all of that. Migraines are terrible pain. Yes, they are. And I will never, ever say otherwise. Never, ever say otherwise. But it's just a headache. No, it's not just anything. Agreed, SP Fanny. Yeah, no, migraines are terrible. I've had a couple of them in my life. And again, I had the viral meningitis, which is like a six-week-long migraine, basically. It's, it's, it was terrible. And it was in my early 20s and it was absolutely awful. And the only thing that either one of the two hospitals that I went to would give me because I didn't have any medical insurance at the time, the only thing they would give me for pain was uh, Tylenol 3. Yeah. Good times. Couldn't eat. Because I'd throw it back up again because the pain level was through the roof. Um, couldn't function really at all. Um, but yeah, here, have some Tylenol 3. That'll be good. 
The ultra risk averse and judgmental attitude of medical professionals also makes it hard to be honest with them when I'm in there for something unrelated. Why is your blood pressure so high? No comment. Yeah. I mean, my sister was. Hey, Duffsta. Good to see you. Good morning. Um, she was morbidly obese. And so anytime she went into the doctor for anything, they wouldn't hesitate to tell her that she was morbidly obese. And she's like, okay, but I'm here for an ear infection. How about we concentrate on the problem at hand? They couldn't do it. So, yeah. anger. Alan Ballantyne, you've got to go. All right. Have a lovely evening, Mr. Ballantyne, and we will catch you tomorrow. Have a good one. People who are healthy and don't have chronic pain have a hard time relating to how being in pain affects you. Yep. That is the truth. They had Tylenol 3 out like candy in the military. I thought that was Motrin. Got a headache, T3. Break your leg, T3. It was kind of a running joke. See, I thought they gave you Motrin for everything. Arm hanging off by a tendon? Take some Motrin. Headache? Motrin. Stubbed your toe? Motrin. Smashed foot run over by a tank? Motrin. No, the pain didn't start after the meningitis. The pain started before the meningitis. Um, Just because it's not Lyme disease doesn't mean there couldn't be a similar effect on the body through the meningitis. No, no, it started before the meningitis. After the meningitis, in a follow-up appointment, they told me that I had Epstein-Barr. And I'm like, oh, good. Because a lot of people didn't believe that Epstein-Barr was actually a thing. Because the other name for Epstein-Barr is either chronic mono or uh, chronic mononucleosis or chronic fatigue. And everyone's like, oh, that's just the yuppie flu. Nobody actually has that. Okay. Except I did. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is just a friggin' mess. It is an absolute mess. A stranger with face tats once offered me Tylenol 3s at a Papa John's in D.C. He should give CME lectures on how to be chill. (laughs) Oh, my God. No, whenever I'm in uh, Bermuda or um, there are a few other countries, I think the Dominican Republic, there are a few places where you can purchase Tylenol 3. Uh, oh, up in up in our nation's hat, you can purchase Tylenol 3, um, acetaminophen or par- paracetamol with codeine. You can purchase it over the counter at a pharmacy. You just have to ask for it. Um, They keep it behind the counter as opposed to out on the shelves. Um, But yeah, anytime I was in Bermuda, I would buy it. I haven't been in Bermuda in a long time. But I think... I think I got it... Might have been in the Dominican Republic last time. Not positive, though. Not positive. No, you can't. I used to. I have in the past. I did in Thunder Bay, Lord Kiss Freak. Sure fucking did. (sighs) 
Yuppie flu. Heard that a lot as a kid about female family members who were really struggling. <sighs> yep. And those were, you know, women were the ones who are most frequently, statistically, it's a, a greater amount of females than it is males who get chronic fatigue or uh, Epstein-Barr syndrome or whatever. I don't know. You had to get it prescribed? Yeah. When I was, last time I was in Thunder Bay, and it's been quite some time, I'm not going to lie. Um, but last time I was in Thunder Bay, uh, I just walked up to the pharmacy. Walked up to the pharmacist and asked them to purchase uh, paracetamol or acetaminophen with coating. And she said, yeah, here are the three different size bottles we have. And here's the prices. What would you like? So maybe it's changed in this time, but that's how it used to be. Is it okay to take the meds you buy over the border into the U.S.? I mean, if you have a prescription, you can bring back a 90-day supply of whatever that medication is, as long as it's for personal use. At least that's what the law was the last time I checked. If chronic fatigue is a thing, I have it. I don't know if it's a real disease or not. Oh, it is. But that seems immaterial. There are pills that make me better at life. Meanwhile, Hef was an excellent Scientologist. I was completely silent through all of my labor and delivery, and I wanted it silent in my room. I don't know why, but it's just the way I get through the pain. It's fair. Allows you to uh, go into a meditative state or an alpha state or a dissociative state, perhaps. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, beloveds, it's almost 4 a.m. here. And I've been going for almost three hours. I thought two and a half yesterday was serious business, but uh, was it two and a half or three and a half? I don't know. I went a long fucking time yesterday. Yesterday was ridiculous, folks. Um, and today we got off on another completely different tangent. Um, but that's okay, because that's what we're here to do. Welcome to Tangent Land. My name is Cricket, and I'll be your host for the evening. Um, Sophia says, if I ever give birth, the kid will learn cussing before it pops out. Ah, Tylenol number three with coating is no longer being manufactured for sale in Canada. For brands that may still be available, search under the acetaminophen plus coating caffeine. This article is being kept available for references only. If you are using this medication, speak with your doctor or pharmacist for information about your treatment options. Okay. Okay. Well, I usually ask for the generic anyway. Um, and there may be, it's not being Tylenol 3 with codeine is not being made for sale in Canada is what that article said, but that you should check other brands and other treatments. I generally just ask for acetaminophen or paracetamol with coating. But again, that's also been some time ago. And uh, I found luck purchasing it in other ways. So, you know, in other places. So, you know. TEC3 you can get. 
Okay. I'm not sure why you're yelling at me, Lord Kiss Freak, but either way. Um, tech three, T E C three. Good night, Cricket, and all. You have a great rest, and seeing all of you tomorrow. And thank you, girl, for making such a safe, calming space. I I love this space, but it's not just me making it. You guys make it too. You do. All y'all are making this space, and I appreciate all of you for it. Um, it wasn't, it, it's not just me. It's not just me. The, the community that's built up here is pretty fantastic and I wouldn't trade it for the world. So thank you. I hope that all of you have a lovely night. Yes, Gretchen only. You just woke up and you, and we're still alive. Not for very long. I'm really getting ready to sign off here. Mother of cats, we get weak codeine and paracetamol over the counter in the UK. Yeah, well, sometimes weak is better than none. Um, I find it's especially handy that I can get it in my travels because travel days really kick my ass. Um, my body cannot even with travel days. It's painful. So anyway, I hope that y'all have a lovely evening, a lovely day, a good night. I hope that you rest well and sleep sweet. Be safe. Stay warm. Peace to you.